Hello, everybody, and welcome to another edition of the Alf Dog Show. I'm Anthony Alfred. It's great to have you with us. And let me tell you, the first weekend of college football, which is not over, by the way, we're going to break things down. We're going to talk about, as well, what all this results in going forward. And, of course, we are less than a week away from the NFL season. But one key guy that we have been in the headlines for a good portion of the summer. Well, this former uh, Pro Bowl player who failed quite a few conditioning tests, um, more than likely he will not start after what Mike Shanahan called an awful performance. I'm sure you can figure out who I'm talking about, but I'll elaborate <laughs> on that as well. So we got a lot, we got a lot to talk about here. This is the Alf Dog Show. <laughs> Hello, America. Let me tell you. It is great. It is so great to have football back. It's awesome. We waited all year long and finally the month of September. Football is finally here. But the most startling storyline had to be what happened with North Carolina. North Carolina, the University of North Carolina their football team, a lot of their players, in fact, 13 of their players did not suit up in last night's game versus LSU. Seven of them are currently ineligible by the school, while six others have been withheld. Now, the six that are withheld they're just checking to make, you know, to make sure so that in case they do violate something, at least North Carolina won't have the possible victories taken away from them by having these guys play. Man, stupid decisions as far as economic, you know, basically violating academic rules. How? You're in a Division I program, and you're pulling that crap off. But, regardless, North Carolina, they went into their game with LSU. They was getting killed. They was getting killed throughout most of the game. And then the fourth, the fourth quarter was 30-10. to 30-10. to 10. And then North Carolina came all the way back. They was one play away. One play away from stealing the victory over LSU. And LSU somehow hung on. And that game kind of tested, you know, the defense of LSU as being inferior. I mean, think about it. You have, you have... You're playing against second and third stringers in North Carolina for the most part. And you're getting chewed up by them, by their offense. Can't do a freaking thing in the second half. Unbelievable. Took their foot off the pedal. And when you do that, when you do that, when you take your foot off the accelerator, it's hard, very hard to start back up. And that's exactly what happened to the Tigers. Luckily, they snuck out a win. But, you know, it's not, it's not getting carried away here, and which nobody is. So, other than that, for the most part, again, TCU, there was three all top 25 matchups this weekend. Next weekend, my goodness. Next weekend, whew, Florida State, Oklahoma, Miami, 
versus Ohio State. Penn State versus Alabama. Oh, man. Man. Good stuff lined up for next week. But this week, the other top 25 matchup, Oregon State against TCU. Now, in the next segment, I'm going to talk about these in the, these mid-major schools. TCU and Boise State. Big, huge what's going on with those two schools this year. TCU obviously hung on and won their game. They have struggled traditional. Actually, it was Oregon State that has struggled in the past. They have struggled in September. They had a chance to win, or at least tie the ball game. But if you saw the play late in the game, a miscommunication between the quarterback and the center, bad miscommunication, I believe it was Yates. Um, he tried to, he was trying to adjust on the fly uh, to the defense and he was looking he was looking and then while he was looking this way ball snapped over his head and then out of panic the quarterback kicked the ball into the end zone uh, for the safety and that took Oregon State out of that game you know it's always this that hurt it. That really hurt it. It's one thing to... It happens in sports all the time. You always want to give yourself a chance to win. You, you do. You want to give yourself a chance to win. If you cannot... If you put yourself in position where you take yourself out of the position to win, that is the most frustrating type of loss ever. Now, so, that's what happened with that. And, of course, other than that, all the other schools that were supposed to win won their game, except for Ole Miss, who let... Trivia question, if you ever heard of this school. Jacksonville State. Jacksonville State come back Double overtime, and they win over the SEC Ole Miss. Well, do you think that that was more embarrassing than Michigan losing to Appalachian State back in 2007? I don't know, folks. But that's a pretty huge way to lose. <laughs> it's a bad way to lose, ladies and gentlemen. It really is. Really, really, really is. We almost had a couple of upsets. Florida went off to a bat. They they didn't wake up. They turned the ball over a lot early. But Miami of Ohio could have took advantage of them, but the way their coaches are calling plays, they're calling giving plays out of their butts. Basically signifying that there is no way we can beat Florida. No way. They had no game plan whatsoever. And that's really the most disgusting display of competition in sports. It really, really is. If you go out and you basically flat out say there is no chance we could beat that team, you know, realistically. Their chances were slim, but their coach with their play caller basically said, we can't win. Going for it on fourth down out of punt formation twice. Once it worked, but the guy got too gut, you know, too greedy. And they had opportunities. You know, you, field, you got to take advantage of field position. They did not do that. Off of two turnovers from Florida, Miami of Ohio, only got three points out of them. Only got a field goal out of that. That's really 
But hey, Jacksonville State got us the upset. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. Now, coming up next, we're going to talk about tomorrow's game, Boise State versus Virginia Tech. And I'm going to talk about Boise State and, and um, TCU in particular, the two mid-major schools that are high in the BCS post. What is it going to take for those schools to get over the hump and possibly make the national championship game? I'll let you know when we come back. <laughs> 